Photolithography is a complex procedure that allows a pattern to be transferred from a mask onto a thin wafer with sub-micron accuracy. There are five key stages to photolithography, preparing the wafer, spin coating the photoresist onto the wafer, exposing the photoresist with a strong UV light, developing the photoresist, and etching the metal. The wafer consists of a thin metal oxide surface adhered to a silicon base with chromium. Once the wafer is cleaned, the first stage of photolithography is spinning a one micrometer thick layer of positive photoresist onto the wafer using a spin coater. Positive photoresist hardens when exposed to ultraviolet light and protects the areas of the oxide that are used to create the patterns. Once the photoresist is spun onto the wafer and baked, a photo mask similar to a stencil is prepared and a strong UV light hardens the resist in the areas unprotected by the mask. The unexposed soft photoresist is then removed with photoresist developer leaving a pattern of bare and photoresist coated oxide on the wafer surface. The next stage of development removes the oxide but not the photoresist or underlying silicon. When the exposed oxide has been etched away, the remaining photoresist can be stripped off with a strong acid or an acid oxide which attacks the photoresist but not the oxide or silicon. This results in a silicon base with metal patterns of a submicron accuracy. The clean room is a sterile environment in which there is a controlled level of pollutants such as dust, airborne microbes, aerosol particles and chemical vapours. The class of the clean room is denoted by the number of particles in the air per cubic metre. The urban environment consists of approximately 35 million particles for every cubic metre, whereas a class 10,000 clean room consists of only 10,000 particles. The airflow inside the clean room is monitored, constantly being filtered to remove any internally generated contaminants. As the occupants of the clean room are the greatest cause of contamination, the following protective clothing must be worn inside the laboratory. Face mask, gloves, booties, and coveralls. When outside the gowning room, put plastic booties over your flat, closed-in shoes. A sticky mat is on the floor on either side of the door. Make sure you step on this as you enter the clean room to remove any additional contaminants. Inside the gowning room, put on another pair of non-slip fabric booties, a hairnet and face mask. Pinch the bridge of your nose through the face mask to make sure it fits correctly. Then select the coverall that is your size. The coverall may have an attached hood, as shown, or a separate hood that is worn under the collar of the coverall. At this stage you are ready to enter the laboratory. Make sure you walk on the sticky mats as you pass through the door. Upon entering the laboratory, first locate the safety glasses and gloves. When you put on the gloves, make sure the cuff of the glove is over the top of the sleeve of the coverall. This protects your arms from splashing chemicals. Heavy duty boots can also be worn over the coveralls as shown. Safety is very important in the clean room as there is complex machinery and many hazardous chemicals. Always comply with the following safety instructions when in the clean room. When you first enter the clean room, familiarize yourself with the locations of the fire extinguishers. Make sure you do not use a chemical in the clean room without first reading its material safety data sheet. When working with the chemicals, always do it under the fume hood. If handling a hazardous material, wear heavy duty rubber gloves, a chemical apron and a face mask. Remember the triple A rule, always add acid to water, never the reverse, as this prevents violent splashing. If too much of a chemical is poured out, dispose of it appropriately in the correct chemical disposal bottle. Do not pour the chemicals back into their storage bottles. Be sure to put the cap back on each chemical storage bottle securely and rinse the outside of the bottle before you return it to storage.
The caps of the disposal bottles should be put on loosely as the gas produced by the chemical waste can put the bottle under pressure. When mixing chemicals, use only one bottle at a time and do not open a new bottle unless an existing bottle is completely empty. While pouring chemicals, be careful to pour them slowly and do not let them gulp. Do not leave your chemicals unattended. If the chemicals will be in use for several hours, arrange with a lab manager or lab technician to leave them. In addition, clearly mark the name of the chemicals, your name, a contact phone number, and when you expect to return on a clean wipe and leave this next to your chemicals. Make use of your laboratory supervisor. Ask them if you are unsure if anything is safe or not, and do not touch anything unless you are sure you understand it. Also, tell your supervisor about any safety hazards. For example, if a beaker containing chemicals is sitting around without a label, report it. It is always best to assume any liquid is dangerous. Finally, clean up your work area before you leave. Thoroughly rinse beakers you used with deionized water and store them upside down in their appropriate locations. Be sure to wash your hands when you leave the microfabrication lab.